Discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to the top 100 and we are continuing on with this segment. Finally halfway through and this time we are doing 50 through 41. Do you want to start? I can. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, my number 50, I know you've played this game because I think you like it, is Elysium. <laughs> I hate it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have played it. That was, that's a good choice. Elysium is a game, I mean, I've owned it before and then I've gotten rid of it because my group has several copies of it here in town. And right, stuff anyway. right. Um, if you like ancient Greek mythology, mm -hmm. if you like... Um, it's not deck. Yeah, yeah, I was like, it's not deck building. It's got the that it's got that unique um, mechanic where you the cards have powers for you, mm -hmm. and then but you have to at some point transfer them down to victory points. Um, so you, there's a balance right there where you need to know, okay, I can lose that ability right, to get the right. points, in. and and the game will come to a crashing halt <laughs> or an end really fast, and you want to make sure you're getting yeah, stuff, you're getting your points, your points right, and stuff. Right. The problem I have with that game. Is that that is that is so hard to teach people? It is a very because you're just sitting game. there. Okay, because you build your decks because it comes with like what ten, ten different gods, something like that, and you yeah, mix like four bunch. or five of them together. Yeah, and so <laughs> you're sitting there, and it's not like one deck of cards you have to teach people. It's four or five you have to teach mm -hmm. people, and mainly I like the the rules came with like, hey, if you want to play like this, add combine these guys, and I like right, that. Right, I like the, right. the, so, and I normally do that, I go through those, and I'm like, hey, do you guys want to play a competitive game, a cutthroat game? Do you want to do things that are other than, you know, card points? And so, uh, that's really nice, but man, it is not an intuitive game at all. No, the, for the very first two times I played it, I was lost. <laughs> yeah. And then, it's like about that third time mm -hmm. or so, you really started to pick up on to that. Kind of figure it out, yeah. I have you played know. it three times, one with... Uh, four people, and then I think, yeah, three people, then two people. It works with any number of players. Right. I've only played it four, and I've probably played about eight or nine times. Yeah, total, it's, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's really good. Another game does that same mechanic where you have the powers, yes. and you try and basically cheese your powers as much as possible, mm -hmm. but then you're like, okay, well, I really need this because I want to get that card and add it. Uh, it's a brilliant mechanic, and I like, I like well, that a lot. And we had talked about, um, I can't think of a little box game now. Um, it's a little box by AG, the, the pyramid one. Where the you pyramid have, one. Uh, by AG. Something Aftermath is one of the expansions. Um, uh, you, you know well, I'm crap, there's a Cry Havoc like Aftermath, but that's not it. No, 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 these are like little box, you know, like the, the love letter and the little box games. Uh -huh. But it's, um, oh my god, <laughs> it's completely drawn a blank right now. The Egyptian little box AEG game, though. It All right. It's like that, when you take the cards that have abilities, and then you need to... Put them in the tomb. Okay, is the same okay. thing for them to count as victory points and stuff. Gotcha. So you know, I felt like they were gonna do expansions with this game, and they just but they just dropped it. Yeah, yeah. it was it, just it like was... here you go, and then no one ever talks about it anymore. Uh, cause, yeah, yeah it was... I see it on the Space Cowboys, and they do great work. When they did, uh, what was that one that they did? Uh, the one with all the chapter and different stories. Time stories. Time stories. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They're they're putting all their resources. That one just released a new expansion, um, the movie yeah, one, that. which says mature audience only. I don't know if that's just because it's a movie theme or if it actually has a mature. I don't know. But but yeah, no. Elysium is fantastic. I we're off to a good start. Yes. All right. My fifty is at least no. <laughs> is uh, a game. I don't know if you've played. Um, most likely you haven't. Dungeon Quest. I've wanted to. Oh I man, okay. So, yeah. so Dungeon Quest is probably one of my go-to games with new people. Actually, one of my avid, uh, you know, players on my channel, that was the very first game I had him play as my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay, because the game's so easy. Hey, draw a tile, move there, and then you, you draw a card most likely. <laughs> That's pretty much all you do. And I believe, I, I, I've never looked this up, but I heard it on another YouTube channel was that uh, someone calculated the odds of actually go getting in, getting a lot of loot, and getting out. Mm -hmm. um, so your odds of survival, which is like 13%. I don't know how the, he drew that number, um, but that's what I've heard. Something. <laughs> yeah, he just made up a low number. Uh, no, so what this game is, is you are explorers, uh, who have your own ability, trying to go into a dungeon, find the dragon's lair, grab as much gold, and get out. It's a push-your-luck game, that's all it is. And so you could... Theoretically, go in, because you, you wanted to have the most loot, 
by escaping. So right. you could go in, find the lodestone that is only worth one, and leave. Like one tile and leave. And you could just sit there and hope that anyone, that, ha that they all die. Yeah. But you run the risk of someone going in, getting something worth five and leaving. So you, you automatically lose. So you want to get more loot and ensure you're going to win. But the more you go in, the more likely you're going to die. Uh, it's just, it's a blast. Like, I, I love this game so much because it's, <laughs> most of the time it's going to end with everyone dying. Right. So, whenever you die, you sit there and most of the time, because it's player elimination, right. you, most of the time people are like, well, I can't play anymore. I'm invested, personally, like, okay, I'm rooting for you all to die now. So, I, at least I don't win, but neither do you. It's, yeah, isn't it an older game, like... It, it came out with a while? fourth edition, okay. so that's the one I have, or it's our a revised edition, right. and they haven't done anything with it since. So it's actually out of print, gotcha. I believe, and I was lucky enough to get it while it was still in print. And it's, uh, I mean, I, I'll never get rid of it. Like, it's, it's a fantastic game. Halfway through the list, made, made number 50. Alright, good job. Alright, mine is a game I don't know if you've played yet. Okay. It is Terraforming Mars. No, I haven't. <coughs> um, wow, really? Yes. Jump to 49. I like card games, uh -huh. you know, and this... Terraforming and, Mars. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. the new one that just came out, right? That well, The one where it's not really about terraforming Mars, you're really just kind of building a business? Yeah, you're just building... Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Business and you kind of do something with Mars later right. on. It is... Uh, Wow, a lot of cube pushing here, you know, it's resource management. Mm -hmm. You need to have a lot of space because yep. you have cards freaking everywhere. <laughs> um, and it's it's fun because you're putting the engine in and then you're, you're building stuff on the planet, you right. know, and stuff like that. Right. And you, there's some cards that won't work unless the temperature's high enough. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can screw people over by dropping a meteor on them. And yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah, and stuff yeah. Too. It's, it's, there's just a lot of stuff. It's, it's, it's a cool engine building game and right. stuff. And, you I have would, to have the player maths, though, right? Well, Otherwise, you I can't don't really play. <laughs> I don't have it yet. And I, and no one like, touched the table. Whenever I've played it with people, it's been like, yes, just heads up. You, know? you have to have like those little gripper things and like yeah. play at a distance, grab the cubes. Well, and I, I've played it I mean, three times so far. I mm. really enjoyed it. I didn't want to invest in the, in the overlays. Oh, okay. Until I knew it was going to be one. Cause right, it, it's right. Now, do you play it solo or have you played it I with? I played it solo and then I played it with two and on three. Okay. Have you played um, with the family? Uh, yeah. Did they like it? Yeah, they okay. liked it. Because my is. worry was that it was actually going to be kind of too heavy and too science-y. Yeah. The, almost. The hardest part of the game is just, to me, is just keeping track of all the things happening. Yeah. Like, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. It's just you have so many things right, that right. could be going off that you have to kind of keep track of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but out of the, all? The, the component quality is lacking. Is it? Um, wow. Like, the cards aren't the greatest. Okay. Um, is it kind of like that gritty the, feel that they're going to get worn on the well, edges? Kind of, but okay. I, it's, they're, they're just not thick. They're not the thick I cards. See. Okay. And, and the graphic design is kind of odd. But right. for it to be this high, I mean, it's that's how good of a game it is. Yeah. It's still, like, it's a really solid game. Right. I think out of all the Mars games that have come out, there was First Martians, there was that one, there was uh, another kind of, you know, terraforming on Mars kind of game that did not do well. I think that's been the, the most successful one. And they just right. released, I think, two expansions. Yeah, the, the Hellas and Elysium. Yep. Elysium. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's just extra maps. Okay. Um, just because the one yeah. that kind of gets old, and then the Venus next. That's I it. Tried that yet? It. And I don't even know if it's not out I don't widespread yet. I think, think it's been sold at some convention. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's what it is. I don't think it's hit retail yet. That's but been I'm interested in that on well. on my mind for a while, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't pull the trigger. Yep. All right. So my forty nine is. Uh, I don't know if you've played uh, Wiz War. Yes. Okay. So Wiz War, okay, perfect. <laughs> Wiz War is a game that uh, you are battling, you are you are dueling mages in an arena, and it is probably the mo one of the most beer and pretzels games I have. Yes. Uh, this is one of those games that if you're gonna go sit down to take seriously, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, nothing is quite as chaotic. Epic Spell Wars, maybe. Uh, really chaotic, but this one's a different because it, it's actually a board and you're moving around trying to strategically place yourself to cast your spell. I have all the expansions for it. Uh, I do the variant where it's just the big book of spells where I just combine all the cards, so it's just this huge stack of spells. Uh, 
I'm probably going to start doing, you know, my app where I just decide right. so it's not so crazy. Um, nothing quite feels like Wiz War. That's what, it's just one of those games where you feel like you're casting all these ridiculous spells that are just chaotic the entire time. Eating, <laughs> like trying to get from one place to the other, you like play a card that allows you to eat a wall and heal yourself, and then now there's a broken wall. This game comes with a ton of tokens, so that's kind of daunting right. to look at all, but most of them won't even come into play unless certain spells are activated. And uh, so, so yes, cards like Wall of War, where you just eat walls, or uh, a Lightning Chain, which actually, if you play it right, can actually ricochet yeah. off of the walls and just fry a person, and it has player elimination as well. So it's a very arcade kind of game. That's yeah, like, yeah, like, that's like an arcade. Game that's a good point. Of, yeah. That's exactly what it is. And <coughs> I mean, I know for a fact uh, that I was trying to decide if I liked Wiz War better or Epic Spell Wars. And I, I like Wiz War just because of the variant that comes with it. Yeah, Epic Spell Wars has that, but also I feel like Wiz War isn't, it isn't as, you know, cutthroat, I but think I, think more, I think it's more, I think it's more complex though. You think? Like, I think it's easier to teach a game like Epic Spell Wars, you just yeah, do the yeah, chain, hey, have yeah, fun, yeah. you know, you're going to hit some right, people, you right. know, it's like. But at least I've had, like, in, in my example, like, Kat has been able to play Wiz War, whereas in Epic Spell Wars, she just happened to be the target of people's right, spells right. and just die before she gets well, played. And then also, that's the player elimination part. That right. I really have on that, because, I mean, you get knocked out, but then you also get a benefit when you come back. Oh, when you come back next round. round. It's, just, right, it's just not right. as long, because if you get killed in Wiz War off the bat, you're, you're, you're just out. For a while. Right. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're both. Yeah. Good game. It's just exactly. Of, it's just kind of like, pick your poison. Uh, Epic Spell Wars is more vulgar. Whereas Wiz War is more family friendly. Uh, and yeah, so you're trying to get either someone's treasure, which, and you take it back to your home starting area, uh, and that gets you a point. First, the two points wins. So you can do that, but then someone can just grab that treasure and run it back. Uh, or you can kill another wizard, which gives you a permanent point, um, and then now they're out. And it's just, it's fantastic. There was one, last time I played, Cat was about to win. She was literally like, I think, one or two spaces away from getting a second treasure. And I shot a lightning bolt through a portal. It went through the other portal and killed her. Yeah. And she was like, why don't you let me win? I'm like, you just, I just don't. Like, if you, I want, in my mind, people, when they win, they need to feel like they actually won. Not just, oh, yeah, I could have attacked you, but I didn't. It's like, that's if I didn't feel like I won at all. Right. So, exactly. Wiz Wars Fantastic, my 49. All right. 48. 48. I just realized you didn't write. Oh, you haven't written yeah, up there. All right. You may have played this. I don't know. This is a card game version of a bigger board game by Queen Games uh, called Thebes, the Tomb Raiders. Mm -mm. Okay, have you ever no. played Thebes? Mm -mm. I actually haven't played a lot of Queen Games now that I think yeah. about it. Escape is no, Queen no, no, Games. No. Um, I'm sure I've played others. Oh, Thebes. Perfume. Was that? Oh, you weren't there for that one. No. Uh, Thebes, it, the, the original board game was, you know, you're archaeologist, you're excavating okay. and stuff. There's, there's like a whole bag full of tokens and some of them could just be dirt and junk and then sometimes you find, oh, sometimes yeah. you find you know, artifacts or yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Well, this is a much more streamlined um, version that's a lot faster as well. But it has, wasn't the big complaint with Thebes that the entire game you can just draw dirt? No, you could. Okay. Because dirt goes back into the bed. I mean, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's, felt it's, like it's I heard like, that as a complaint that <coughs> like there's really no luck or strategy to it because you right, can just get hosed by just right. drawing from the... Okay. The cool thing about this game is, is it's, like I said, it's a card game. There's a little board that you'll be on and uh, there's set collection in it. Um, you're also, their, their cards are broken up into, there's certain rows of cards that, uh, I can't remember, if there's like Egyptian, I can't remember the other three, but there's, there's like three or four uh, deals needed, they're face down okay. in piles, and that's what you're digging through. Some of it's worthless, some of it's stuff, so that's kind of that mechanic from Thebes. I see. But okay. what, what is cool about this game is everything you do takes time. So on the scoring track, um, you will be... Uh, if you're in last place, and you do something that only takes one time, and mm -hmm. you're still in last place, you get to go. You get to keep going. Oh, okay. Whoever's in last place is at their turn. Oh, okay. So you, so there's these really cool, powerful cards you can do, uh -huh. or digs, or whatever. 
that may cost you six times. So you're okay. going to jump way up, but then you're not, not going to go turn. for a while. You're not going to get another turn oh. for a while. Um, That's and cool. It, I, it's hard. It's it's a very simple game to learn. Right. Um, but it's it's a blast. Like yeah. my whole family loves it, and and uh, you dig through the stuff and get the victory points for different artifacts. And there's okay. you know, and it's so it's, uh, I think. Uh, the the new Firefly game that's coming out, Brigadiers and uh, some whatever I can never yeah, remember. It did that same mechanic. The oh, yeah. actions cost time, and then your the last one mm -hmm. up just goes first. And I remember that being interesting. So that's really cool. Yeah, I like it because it, it it's a good catch up. Like yeah, you do it, you you pay for the powerful thing. Yeah, but then other yeah. people can nickel and dime. It's almost like a different yeah. iteration of kind of mm -hmm. like uh, what you're talking about level seven, where the more the people do, or or a stronghold. Mm -hmm. uh, the more one person does, the more the other person gets to do. Right. Stuff like that. And I, I always really like that balance. And it's very interesting with four players. Is like, it? Like, I would rather play it with three or four, because okay. obviously because of that mechanic. Yeah. If you're yeah. playing with two, then... Then it's just always going to be you, and then them, and then you... And most it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool game, and the games always seem to be close. Because there's set collection, too. There's like, per, I can't remember what they call them, professor lecture cards or something like okay. that. The more of those you have the more they're worth at the end of the game, too. Okay. So that stuff pops up, so. Awesome, <clears throat> awesome. So, 48, my 48 is a game that I don't think you've played. It is actually Kat's favorite work replacement. Like, I was surprised she liked this game as much as she did, and that's Simurg. Uh, nope, you played Simurg. So no. Simurg is, I, I can see the logo. Nope, nope, it's not Nokia. Um, but it's, it's similar to that. That's the company who made it, and I think they're working on another one. But Smurg is a worker placement game ab <laughs> about Dragon Riders. Yeah. And that's actually the only reason I bought it initially, because I was like, oh, that's awesome. Take theme out of the, out of the fucking thing. <laughs> like, right. You don't really do anything about that. So the Smurg is you have your regular you know, workers, and you also have your Dragon Riders. And so some of the spaces on the board can be for anyone. Uh, or any type, but some are strictly for those workers, some are strictly for the dragon riders, and so on your turn you will go to these and you only have a limited, so then your entire turn is to recall them. Right. I always like that on worker placements because you're kind of like, okay, well, how do I want to finagle exactly. my workers? With uh, So Samurk does that, and yeah, like, so you're trying to resource manage with meat and, and leaks, I think, which allow you to then spend to get more, you know, workers, or you can actually try and get a whole bunch of stuff to buy a dragon or hatch a dragon, which will give you special abilities right. for each dragon you have, and sometimes that's also kind of a set collection for a bunch of points. The interesting thing about that's the worker placement part, and that's pretty simple. Uh, the really cool, because I played this with me, Kat, Robert, and John. Mm -hmm. First time Robert and John played it. Uh, and so we were playing, and uh, on the right side are quests that you can go on. Nothing thematic about them, you can just place your dragon riders, that's them going out. And uh, you, you go down this track, so you can go up to the top, and then you can branch down, and then the first one to finish it will get points, and we'll get all this stuff. The interesting thing is that is your timer. For each quest that you finish goes onto a pile, and depending on the number of players, that's what's strictly into the game. So what's interesting is that the players dictate the speed. Because anytime a worker or anything is removed from a tile and the tile's empty, it gets discarded to that pile. So one time, when we were playing last time, it was, we just kept removing people. Once we figured that out, the game like shortened real quick, and so we're like, oh shit, we have a lot we have to do. So the, like we always kept people on it. Right. And like we all kind of worked together because we all didn't want the game to end. Exactly. But whenever I was calculating points, I was like, we had like one more tile before the game ended. And I was like, okay, I'm pulling him so I can end the game so I could win. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's a very smart and streamlined game, and simple as well. Uh, and it, they just released the expansion, which I haven't played yet, but I really want to. I think it adds either a Merlin or, or a Wizard or something like that, and a different sideboard. So that's my 48. That's cool. Some <coughs> I know you probably haven't played this one. It's Floodgate Games, though. I know you like one of Floodgate Games. Uh, games. Okay, so, I oh, is it Vault Wars? Yes. I have played Vault you Wars. Played I played at Gen Con. Oh, sweet. Yes. I was like, dude, I don't think you've played... Uh, um, Sagrada, yeah. Sagrada, thank I you. Yet. I can't well, find it in print. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me a copy. Yeah, I'm yeah. important. Um, <clears throat> wow. So anyway, wow, 47. Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have the deluxe version, too. It was so. just the metal coins, right? Yeah, it was, I haven't played Matt. And oh, okay. Jazz okay. Too, but 
<clears throat> um, I played Robert's copy. Okay, that that's, that's right. Really that's right. Because he, he like <laughs> at, at Gen Con, he wasn't going to buy any more games, and we were just kind of going around because I was going to, you know, play test some of their games, right. and we just tried all of them while we were there. And he was like enamored with it oh, yeah. and just bought it immediately. Well, it's really cool because it's like, well, you guys have watched Storage Wars, so it's 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 more or less that <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, <clears throat> but it's fantasy setting. Yeah. And there is set collection and stuff like that, but what's unique about it is <clears throat> one player is going to be the auctioneer. They get to see, depending on the deal, they get to see what is in the storage area mm -hmm. or the vault. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they get to set the initial opening price. So there could be crap in there, but they could set it really high and make the other people think that there's something really cool mm -hmm. because the auctioneer ends up, they can't, and then they can't uh, do any more. Um, they, the auctioneer can't bid. So he sets, let's say he sets it at 20, and everybody else passes, he pays the 20, he but, pays he, the 20. but he gets what's in there. Mm -hmm. If he sets it at 20, and everybody starts bidding up, and it ends up going for 40, he gets all that money. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can build up your money. Right. See, there's, a, there's an ebb and flow there, because there's not really other ways to get money unless until you're the auctioneer. Right, right. <clears throat> so, uh, and there's, it's, so there's some deduction, there's some, there's some, you know, fooling other people, mm -hmm. trying to, Get, kind of gambed that there's, gambling it's, way. It's again. a, a swindler. You're <laughs> right, a swindler. Right. And then there's all kinds of different, like some of the vaults will have abilities that you're going into. Oh, so, yeah, they do. So there's like, you know, the some of these, these mini cards will be face, have to be face up and can yeah. be seen, but then the other ones have to be face down, or everybody gets to look at one of the cards. Yeah, the I was like, there's and, something about that. You know, there, there's a lot of different variants mm -hmm. in there, and... and and which makes it really, really cool because yeah. sometimes you can, like the one that you get to look at a card, you can look and see it's junk and right. then be like, I'm not bidding, but then everything else in there could be awesome. Right, right. Yep. And, and then you also, you get a a character card at the beginning of the mm -hmm. game. And so that's your, your uh, and they have very, very player powers. They each have some. So like mine was, like to collect junk. So I was trying to collect yeah. junk cards that's because right. they were worth more at the end of the game. Right, right. <clears throat> and junk's usually worthless. Usually, yeah. right. But you can sell stuff, can't you? The, yeah, there's okay. stuff you can sell at the deal. But you have special abilities, like some stuff you can get. You can use them for special abilities mm -hmm. to maybe steal something from somebody else. Or, That's right. Or whatever. There's there's a bunch of different stuff in the game. It's a small box game, but there's so much so much crap in that game. Yeah, I know. I like. I I should have bought it while I was there. Maybe I can talk to them and be like, hey. <laughs> well, like, God, yeah, yeah. Over. They're still selling everything online, even the deluxe version. Are they? So, yeah. Okay. So go to their website. It wasn't that. There. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. But awesome. yeah, it's a great game. Cool. Cool. My forty-seven is you've had to play the Santorini. Yes. Okay. Santorini is a fantastic abstract yet thematic two-player game uh, about the Greek gods building the the town in, or the island isle of in Greece, Santorini, which is a real place. You can definitely go there, and uh, it's on a little isle. And first of all, I gotta say, presentation of this game is amazing. Oh yeah, like it's a lot like, better than the original. Because what was the original? It was, it's the same game. It was oh, just, was it? It was like just cubes and balls. Oh, and God. So, That's yeah. awful. Yeah. So this <laughs> one I have is an actual like 3D board that, you know, is on the cliffside and you have the board of, of the grass and then you have different white blocks uh, that actually stack with the little blue rooftop on it. What makes this game so fantastic is you have two workers who can move and build. And that's all they do. And so you're trying to block people because uh, from from building and getting to the third uh, third tower, because that's this is how you win. So the, in, innately, that sounds kind of boring, but every god has a unique ability that, depending on who they're up against, is either a perfect match or one some someone's broken. So you're trying to work to where you can finagle it, to where you can get your people up and land on the third third uh, story and win. But you can build up any level. So like. If someone gets a, th a three, you can move to a space adjacent to them and put a blue roof, which means that, that you're blocking that third level. And uh, my favorite god to play as is, I think, wow, I cannot remember. It's not Ares. It starts with an A. Atlas. Atlas, thank you. The one that can put the blue uh, roofs on any level. And it's just so fun because all you do is send, because the workers are the same. You just have two of them. You can just move one worker to block someone else from whatever they're trying to do while you're trying to stack up and build. But they also have two workers. And I gotta say, the expansion, the Golden Fleece, is just a little small box that just adds a couple more gods 
and the Golden Fleece, which means if you're near that, you get your ability that way, or the Golden Fleece ability. And I, I love every variant of this game. Uh, it is one of the best two-player games that I have. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's Santorini. I had it and sold it. Why? <laughs> because my wife surprisingly didn't like it. Wow. wow. I thought she Divorce. was a shoe. I thought it was a shoe in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> but for some reason, she, and she even won. But she just didn't care she for it. She didn't like it? Wow. Yeah, so that's interesting. I got it. I sold it when it was out of print. Yeah. Oh, so gotcha. Got some money off of yeah, it. that sucks because <coughs> it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it. I, don't, I can't see why anyone wouldn't yeah, like I was, it. I was very surprised. Because it's so. so charming, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a perfect game in my book. Yeah. Now, there are gods that are like, you know, either. And, and what they did in the rules was kind of say, especially with the Golden Fleece, was, hey, don't pair these two up right? because uh, they don't work together and I think that's that's great to have because yeah sometimes you can just have a really shitty yeah. god yeah, against sure. another one but yeah Santorini <clears throat> all right 46 is ashes rise of the phoenix born so I have wanted to play that mainly because it looks awesome <coughs> like the art is amazing <clears throat> and then I know that at uh, the game store they we're doing tournaments, and they kept inviting me, but I, I don't live in, in town anymore. So, you know, I, just, I had all of the stuff for it okay. at the time, and nobody played it anymore yeah. around here. Like, the closest place that played it was in Tulsa. So oh, wow. I go to Netrunner. So, okay. I was, I would, so, I ended up selling it. Yeah. Um, but it is, I don't know if you've ever played, I mean, it's kind of a mix of Magic and Couriers and... Stuff like okay. that. It's all kind of mixed yeah, together. That's the I dice. Magic. And, okay. You know, the dice are your resources. That's right. Each 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 Phoenix born that you are has the uh, certain type of mixture of dice mm -hmm. that you can choose for and your spells. You build your deck. It's just like any of that other stuff. But then you roll the dice, and those are the resources you use to cast stuff or summon stuff. And, right. Right. And everything. And then there's attack. You attack, and it, it's your typical. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot like magic, but instead of having the Land cards, the, mind, the, the stuff. mana. It's, you have all these dice that do different stuff. Plus, you get to build your own dice pool. Okay. Because there's all these different types of spells, and some of them you use the black dice, and some of you use so right. you can kind of make your own combination. Okay. Them. The really cool thing I like about this game, though, is if you've ever played a card game like Magic or Netrunner or anything like that, mm -hmm. you've always gotten hosed by. Your opening hand <laughs> you, at some you, point, yeah, right? at some and point, you can oh, roll yeah. again. You can get another yeah. hand, right? Yeah. And ashes. The coolest uh, mechanic with it is you get to choose the first five cards out of your deck really? in your hand. Oh wow, that sounds broken. But, but everybody, everybody <laughs> everyone can do it. it. Yeah. Right. So so you start with the five cards you want in your hand at the very beginning of the game. That's awesome. And and everybody gets the everybody can do that. So that's okay. great because yeah. they let you. Really, truly battle the decks yeah. instead of variants. Instead of just being like, you oh, know. you have to get all the cards you need. <clears throat> right. My deck sucks because I didn't get right. the cards. Okay. Um, so that's just, that wow. was just awesome how they wow. did that. That is know? awesome. Now, can um, you get hosed by the dice? You can. Okay. But there's there's ways of like, I um, can't remember the exact mechanic, but there was either sacrifice a dice to flip one okay. to another uh, face of your okay, choice. Okay, so it's on, it's on the, the card. It says, okay. it says what you can do. There's, there's a way to manipulate dice, but you have to sacrifice other dice to manipulate and stuff like that. But yeah, that is a way. But if, uh, if you try to, if you don't, um, you don't want to go too thin. You usually want to pick like two kinds of magic. Yeah. Colors of dice. You yeah. Don't wanna go, you don't want to go mono necessarily unless right. that's a thing now because I haven't played some of the new, <laughs> the new decks have been coming out yeah. and stuff. But so they're still releasing stuff. Who's the... Uh, uh, it's the Plat Hat. Plat Hat. They yeah. just had some new stuff just okay. come out here recently. So that's um, interesting. But uh, it, I don't think it got the... It was really hot at the beginning. Right. And then they had distributor issues. Okay. Um, so new stuff wasn't coming out for a long time. Yeah. And then it just kind of died. Yeah. And, and, and new stuff's still coming out, but I just don't... I think they lost their chance mm -hmm. of really think so. the community. That sucks too because <clears throat> being able to choose your opening hand, that's awesome. It's it's yeah. Like it's, that makes me truly want to try it. It truly puts Phoenix Born versus Phoenix Born. You right, know, like, right. Instead of, you know, playing you walker where it's like, yeah, if you get fucked with an open hand and it's like, <laughs> it's a backhand J. You yeah, know, and you're like, I hate this game. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was your forty six. My forty six <laughs> I think I'm done after this one. <laughs> this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> It's hey, just, I'm, 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 I'm surprised you're not your freaking number one. 
<laughs> no, I'm not Steve Garcia. <laughs> all right. See, I've met you. I love you if you ever see this. Uh, all right. So regular pandemic. So I've talked about Rain of Cthulhu. I've talked about Iberia. Um, I, oh, wait, maybe Legacy is on here. No, I don't think Legacy made it. I can't remember. I don't remember my list really. I remember my number one. That's it. So nothing really beats base pandemic. Yes, Iberia is great. Uh, Rain of Cthulhu is, is good. Um, the legacies are fantastic only for that session, and it's, then it's over. Um, but regular pandemic is just fantastic. Like, you sent me that video of those two guys saying the pandemic. Yeah, was and I was just like, I was like, I know he's messing with me, but I'm interested to see if these guys are actually serious because in, nothing they said makes sense. Like, so if you don't know pandemic, it is basically what, what, huh? You've been living in a hole. <laughs> yeah. It is. I mean, come on, you cannot deny that it revolutionized Oh, no, I have no gaming. doubt about that. I just can't stand it. <laughs> Not, I mean, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> at this point, there's like 18 different versions of the pandemic. Uh, anyway, so you are members of the CDC fighting off the four disease cubes, and it's a situational game, but it does one of the best mechanics possible where you, have, you don't have perfect knowledge, but you can react, and it kind of has a roller coaster kind of feel where... At the beginning of the game, for setup, you infect nine cities, three have three cubes, three have two, and then three have one, and then those go in a discard pile, and you just deal with the diseases as they're slowly coming out, and then you're removing them with abilities, trying to research, and then win the game. Uh, but there's epidemic cards that will then immediately, you know, infect one city with three cubes, uh, or cause an outbreak, but then the discard pile gets shuffled up and then set back on top, so that all the cities that you have now... Uh, cleaned up and have you know are infected will start to come so not every city will get infected um, and that's the ebb and flow it's like you're you're like coasting you're like oh yeah we're doing good then an epidemic happens and then it all kind of like oh crap okay what cities are going to be affected okay so that's regular pandemic then they have a bunch of expansions you know the in the lab which basically makes instead of just discarding five cards of uh, you know to, to just research a disease it sets up pretty much its own mini game where you kind of now finagle the cubes to come into a certain way and that's how you research the diseases uh, there is the on the brink one which was, was the first one that just added a traitor, a traitor yeah. that it, throw that away don't do that ever it's dumb it is so dumb the best thing about that expansion was the petri dishes <laughs> Yeah, well, was that on the brink? Yeah, that's okay. The yeah, the petri dishes for the cubes. It's so awesome. No, like, th it's so thematic. Pandemic is such a thematic game, even aesthetically. Uh, and then it also added the vir virulent strain. Not the virulent strain. Uh, the um, shitty events that only affect a certain disease. Then they have state of emergency, which added the hinterlands, which is basically a reason where these diseases are coming from, was animals. And then that kind of added your luck element of the hinterlands kind of uh, outbreaking. And then, uh, yeah, in the lab. So, it, but if you really want to play the, the only version of Pandemic worth playing is the cure. <laughs> is the cure. If you are simple-minded <laughs> and you can't understand regular base Pandemic, which is another great well, gateway you game. Can, you can go for an hour and a half and die, or you can play for 30 <laughs> minutes and die. And and die. I'd, I'd rather just do 30 minutes and die. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but that's, that's Pandemic, so 46. <laughs> All right, my number 45 is near and far. You're kidding. And Why is it so high up? Well, mine made, mine made the top 100, right? Uh, only because I remember what it was like the first time I played it. I, I like it. 45? Yeah. You have like so many games. I know. Is I above know. and below on your list? Yes, you, maybe at some point. <laughs> it anything. better be. Uh, near and Far is, is it's a good game. It, it, no, it, it is. Was, there was one mechanic that we talked about in one of your other videos. Right, right. mechanic that had that, that tent laying thing yeah. in the game. I, if that wasn't in there, I would love this game even more. Yeah. It would probably be a top 20 game. Right, right. And everything. You didn't do the campaign, though, did you? No, I don't. <laughs> um, and I enjoyed it, with the exception of that one rule. None of my, Nobody else I played it with enjoyed it. So yeah. that's why it's not... You know, it's it's there for me. Right. It would be higher if I was able to play it more. Right, right. Um, I will say, though, uh, <clears throat> like, I haven't played it since I've done the campaign for the channel, but I can't pull the trigger on selling it. 
either. Right. There's, there's, there's something that draws me still to it because the storytelling aspect of it. But right. man, that campaign, that that's what ruined it really. We tried to bum rush ten games, and that campaign is, is just awful. So that expansion that was on Kickstarter, not too long yep. ago, does that change anything? That changes the minds. Yeah. Uh, which is now, I think it changed. It added. Uh, like a variant to the way the, the tents in the, in the mines get placed. It's not just go there and lay one. Right. I think there were like events and mine events that happened. Um, I think it added more stories. Um, it was, I think it was just a small box. So the tent, so the, in other words, the tent. Yeah, yeah, they probably yeah. fixed that, so. Well, I, I sold mine, so. Yeah. It, it's, it's, still, it's still a great game and I'll play it anytime mm -hmm. somebody wants to play it, but it's, it's still not above and below. Right, what they and did. Above and below is still. Better. Best, yeah. What they did uh, really well with this, um, <clears throat> the above and below, and no other game that Red Raven has done, is their storytelling actually had keywords and side uh -huh. quests, which was really cool. Right. Um, because in the campaign, luckily it happened, was you'll get a keyword, and it's kind of bittersweet because it's only if you happen to get that quest and you have that keyword, something special happens, but you can have that keyword and someone else gets the quest and you'll never get to do it. Right. Um, so that kind of bugs me. But then they have the side quests that you could individually go on. And that's, <laughs> we mentioned that um, with Fallout, you know, with the quests that you, can, uh, that you can share, was that if it's going to be competitive, then you should have your own quest. Right. Because you can go on these tangents that like, or, and my friend uh, Devin brought up, do the keyword aspect. Hey, I got the keyword, that's so only I can deal with this. Right. But anyway, so, I mean, near and far, I'm still keeping it. Um, I'll probably get the expansion when it comes out, just because uh, I just, I'll never play the campaign yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, and like I said, it's 45 because that's still it's still a really good game. High, one right. mechanic isn't going to totally crush the game yeah. for me. It um, was nice, too, because, yeah, the first game we played, which is why it made my list, was because it was so it's like it was just so charming and mm -hmm. so much fun. We weren't trying to like, <laughs> we weren't so trade route right. <sighs> angry about it. We everyone got to explore, everyone got to do what they wanted to do, and it was just a matter of points. And so I think if you take near and far and play kind of like above and below, where it's a, a solo game, mm -hmm. and you just play a random random map, it's it's fantastic. That in and of itself, I think is is better than above and below. But I think they tried to do too much yeah. with it. Yep. Okay. So my forty five is wow. You just, you already mentioned it. Today? Yeah, today. <laughs> uh, Elysium? It, it is Elysium. <laughs> uh, so, the same exact reasons that we talked about. I like it five spaces higher than you do. <laughs> that matters for some reason. Uh, yeah, Elysium is fantastic. Uh, we already kind of talked about it, and, um, like, yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we pretty much said that, so... My favorite part of Elysium, I guess I should say, is that uh, that tug of war of deciding when to use your right. abilities and chaining them as combos, then deciding, okay, well, ugh, yeah, you're still really good, but you're not. You're kind of like overstayed oh, your welcome. Let me put you back down in in this uh, under in my Elysium to get points. That that feeling is just is just awesome. It doesn't get to the table as much as I'd like because it's not as intuitive. It's right. kind of like the same reason that whenever I talked about that game, Guilds of London, mm -hmm. that it's almost any time you bring it out, you have to reread the rules and re-understand the cards again, because there's, there's a lot of content in this, in this game. I wish they just did more with it, instead of just kind of releasing it and just... Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's my 45, Elysium. Alright, <clears throat> my 44. Uh, I'm a Star Wars guy. Probably didn't tell that. <laughs> well, these I'm are mine. So. All over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, Star Wars X-Wing. Wow. Um, wow. I don't have any of this stuff anymore because nobody plays it around here anymore. Um, but, I mean, there's there's not very many games that, you know, if they're like, if they have this stuff and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, we want to play X-Wing, I'm going to jump on X-Wing. It is, it, yeah. is, it is an awesome, awesome... Well, see, that's how I thought, I think, X-Wing used to be. Now it's like, hey, you want to get X-Wing? Uh, I don't have my collection built, um, but let right. me just pull out these 16 Tupperware things. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, N uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you know? it was good for the first year and a half. Yeah. Is when it was at its best. And then it got really convoluted with some stuff. Yeah. They fixed some stuff with the... With the with FAQs it. and the and yeah the different stuff, facts, and then they did the Force Awakens release. Right, I mean, more the best part of this game was just getting the the first wave 
I mean, yeah. like if you just played with the core box, couple core boxes, the first wave, and maybe the Slave One and the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, because that was my collection at the time. That was all I had. Okay, um, I think I went a little bit further. That was great. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, perfect. it's perfect. It uh, it stomps the hell out of Star Trek Attack Wing. <laughs> um, it's better than Dungeons and Dragons Attack Wing with the dragons. Oh my and god, stuff. they did have that. Yeah, um, it's better. I I I like it better than Armada. I um, okay. Just because I like the the close the dog fighting. Yeah, the dog fight, yeah. close encounter stuff. Um, Armada's good. Armada's good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying it's just. I like the the quicker movement stuff. Yeah. It's like the no, whole I, lumbering I thing. The huge kind of yeah. I mean, but if you want to feel like you're doing some damage, mm -hmm. you play Armada. Like oh, moving yeah. that huge yeah. ship and just rolling all these dice, and you're like, yeah, that's like forty damage. Um, but you're right, the maneuvering around and trying to outmaneuver your opponent to get to right. do your abilities and stuff like that. I mean, Star Wars X-Wing was great until it became kind of like that deck constructing. Right. And so now it's like list constructing. And I'm like, like if anyone still had, I sold all my stuff as well because the person I was playing with avidly who would go to tournaments and stuff mm -hmm. had everything. Right. And mainly he would just give me a list to play and then to test out one of his lists for a tournament he wanted right. to go to. And that was fine. Like, just like Magic or anything, hand me a deck and I'll play. Right. I don't want to make the deck, I don't want to make the list, just let me play the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, the Painted Minis also. Oh yeah, I like. already painted <laughs> that stuff, yeah, it's great. I, they, um, I didn't, I played it competitively once at a low-key tournament, mm -hmm. but the best part of it was because I used to have three or four people around here that, that had stuff. And yeah. We just get fun, just fun get together yep. to play. Yep. You know, it was, that was when it was at its best, but still, super game. All right. My 44 is, okay, uh, I think you've mentioned it, uh, Battles of Westeros. Have you, have you already talked about that? I don't know if I talked about it I or feel not. like you had. Maybe it was on my, um, yeah, go ahead and talk about it. So, Battles of Westeros is basically uh, the Command and Colors system in Game of Thrones, but it's a lot more in-depth. Like, the other Command and Colors was Memoir 44, which I despise. Uh, this one is uh, like a better iteration of that because, it, like, yes, you roll dice to to attack, but that's literally like your only luck. You get to control everything you want to, um, and you get the as you know flanking and other objectives you get to do, and you have heroes within um, you know certain groups of of your uh, you know your army that also have abilities and also mitigate die rolls and stuff like that. Sixty eight was yeah. with yours, yeah. um, and uh, each of these I don't know maybe it's the Game of Thrones feel over World War Two because uh, I'm way more into fantasy than actual history that probably you know shoots us up way high, but it's also book Game of Thrones, not not show Game of Thrones, which I which I'm a book guy. So I've done two, three scenarios with this game. Um, I was able to play with my mom, surprisingly enough, and it was like really weird because she almost won. And I'm like, how is this possible? But I rolled the exact what I needed to roll to end up winning. Um, no, I think, I think this does that Command and Colors thing, uh, you know. It does well. It's, to me, it's, it's, it's like Memoir 44 in complexities here. And Battle of Westeros is here. Oh, there's yeah. There's a lot more. There is a lot. There is a lot more. The, to like, this. I can't remember the terminology they used, but there was like the, the guarding or whatever. The uh -huh. Like if you were right next to them, then they'd get yeah, the and, yeah, and stuff. So there was a lot more, uh, even even more. Right, right. T technical. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's all those keywords and right, stuff right. that you have to know. Um, it's great, well. great game. Obviously, because it was in my top one hundred. Right, right. And I um, just got the Baratheon yeah, I saw stuff, that and then the other. And, um, yeah. The tribes of the Vale. The tribes of the Vale and the other river, one, which river, river. I'm surprised that they just dropped it because what? Because the battles, I mean, the Baratheon one obviously adds the Baratheons. I'm surprised they didn't do anything with the Greyjoys or with yeah. you know the Martells or any of the other houses. It was it's literally now Starks, Lannisters, Baratheons. I just think the I just don't you, think it was. You don't think the, the community like was that. there? I yeah. The, I think the sales weren't great. Right, just kinda... right. Because what do the tribes of the Vale add? The Dothraki. <laughs> The no, it's the <coughs> the tribes of the Vale are like oh, the, it's the Arryns. <coughs> it's, it's the Vale. All oh, right, but there was those those mountain people that. Yep, I see. Okay. That, 
And there was another one, Bannerman of something, Bannerman of the North or something yeah, like that. No, no, that's, that's the other one. Brotherhood of, or Brothers of the South or something. That's like it, that. yeah. Yeah, whatever. I can't. I had all the junk in right, it. And right, right. I ended up getting rid of it. Cause so if you are if you want something like the Command and Colors, uh, you know, to strictly two player, but you want something more complex and set in Game of Thrones, Battles of Westeros is going to be your best bet. So all that's right. my 44. My 43 is the better Commands and Colors. Is it Axis and Ally? Oh my god, no it's not! MR44. That game is absolute <laughs> garbage. Now, <laughs> I'm a history guy, so so I know a lot about the battles and these and these that these books That's show anyway. Fine. <laughs> and I I love the hell out of this game. I hate um, that game. It's whether you're playing as the Axis powers or the or the, uh, Depends on what scenario the scenario calls for. If you happen to be the one that they want in real life, you're going to win the game. Well, not all the time. It's it's pretty it's pretty solid. Oh yeah, you can now, lose because you can get hosed now, on dice and hosed on the deck. The one experience you have to have with this game, though, is going all out Overwatch, where you are. I mean, it takes like two tables, and it's oh, a huge battle. Overlord, it's, it's the oh, Overlord. Yeah, yeah, I said Overwatch. I'm like Overwatch. I'm like what? Um, <laughs> where you're actually doing D Day yeah. Normandy. And running, I mean, that is just nuts. I'm sure but, it is. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had, I think I had um, Battle Lore down here you at did. some point. Mm -hmm. I had that at some point. Yep. This is the cream of the crop. Um, just, I, I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it is. I don't like, I don't like luck and strategy games. I, well, <laughs> war is luck. <laughs> what? <laughs> sometimes you hit people, sometimes you don't. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, I don't know. It's it's it's. I I find the strategy strategies and, and I, this goes with what you said. You said you probably like that because you're more into Game of Thrones over history. Right, right. I'm the opposite. Yeah. I like history over Game of Thrones, and and uh, it's just I don't know. It's more realistic to me. Um, it just it just felt know, so flat. And, like the. Like I like dice happen, and at the end of the day, like I, I accept that. But whenever you're sitting there drawing only cards that allow you to activate the left side, and you don't need to activate the left side, it's like why the fuck am I playing? Like right. I need to activate this side because he's gonna. Oh, you're you're getting all the right cards. Okay, cool. So you can keep attacking, and that's how you win. And there's nothing I can do about that at all. Right. But that happens, and I can't stand it. Game. Can't stand it. Nope, this doesn't happen in Battles of Westeros. It has zones. No, it doesn't. That one doesn't have zones. Uh -uh. No, I haven't played that forever. No, no, you, you, you like. You, well, it's not command and colors then, if it doesn't have zones, because that's the whole. That and I thought the command and color system was no, it's, different. It's, 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 the, it's the three zones. Three zones. That, no, it's not. That, um, I always thought it was considered one though. That's no. Was, okay. Okay. Anyway, Memoir yeah. Forty Four, awful. Probably the worst uh, selection. Uh, <laughs> worst game you've added so far. So let's go into a good Forty Three. <laughs> We're on Forty Three, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, let's go on to a really good one, uh, depending on who you are, um, called Cutthroat Caverns. That's not bad. Uh, so, I think you've mentioned Cutthroat Caverns. I like this game a lot. Uh, premise of this game is the fact that you are... It, this one... Oh, it is semi-cooperative. Oh, it has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. There's one semi-cooperative game that I like. Because um, <laughs> I usually hate any semi-cooperative. Right, right, right. Uh, but this one has a different feel to it because it's not, this one doesn't do either, I don't know, the, no it does do either one of you win or you all lose, because um, yeah. you all die. But yeah, so you're all going, working together, trying to go in and, and just kill a stack of, of bosses that all will affect certain people, but you want to help someone because they, because you want them to help you later, but you can also make sure that someone dies, but if you make sure they take the damage, then they can hose you later. Yes. And it's just this, this kind of just back and forth between the entire table. And sometimes everyone's going to get hit. And <laughs> the last time I played this was just Robert sitting down <laughs> and dying. Oh, I know. But then the first fight, and he went home. <laughs> and it's like, all right. Uh, but no, they added, they've added so much. They've actually added like two campaigns to it. Yes. They just released a new expansion, which adds the seven there's, deadly sins. There's so much crap for that yeah. game. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, but the problem with this game is that the component quality is awful. And uh, sometimes the art doesn't really fit well, where it's like, man, that's really detailed and awesome. And then, oh, yeah. look, <laughs> look at this. Uh, it's awful. 
So, like, that can kind of just pull you out of it. But then they have treasure rooms, and then others are just... The variety of the monsters that you're fighting is amazing. And they all fit with what you're fighting. Yes. So, which is, which is really cool. And I was talking to the guy at Gen Con uh, about the Seven Deadly Sins. And if I'm not mistaken, I... Uh, after he told me what some of the sins did, I was like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Like, they were outrageously brutal. Haven't played that expansion yet because I'm trying to... You kind of want to play this with... I'd say four. Like, you don't want to play this with three because it's cutthroat, and this is really cutthroat, so someone's going to get ganged up on. Even numbers. Just do even numbers. Not two. But, so, four or six... Um, maybe five, but yeah, Cutthroat Caverns, my 43. All right. <clears throat> 42 is Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I haven't played it. I want to. Um, this game killed suburbia for me. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it's kind of the, you're building a castle, and... It's got the it's got a um, auction system. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a builder each turn, and they get to choose the order that stuff is put That's and right. how much the stuff costs. Okay. Um, and then you go through and you buy stuff, and then you place it in your castle. So there's you get points awarded or different stuff awarded for how you place your deals. Yep. Um, if you put a I don't know, a kitchen right next to a bedroom. Okay. Or, a, you know, it's not good. It causes right, loss right. of points or whatever. Right. But if you you kind of have some good feng shui or, or whatever, then it's good. And you have special abilities as well. So um, you'll get, uh, there's these really large rectangle pieces. Mm -hmm. if, you're the, if you have the most of those, you get all those big orange points. Yeah. Again. yeah. Just, just, just different stuff. There's all kinds of different stuff. There's an expansion called uh, Secrets, I want to say. Or secret passages, or something like secrets or secret passages. I I haven't played with the expansion yet. I have it, but but um, it's it's interesting because it has one of those things where you know you may want a piece, but when you're the builder, you don't you're not the first to buy, right? Like the last, so you need to put something expensive, you know, yeah. like back there to make sure you can get it yeah. or make it, or if they're buying it, you know, because you get the money. It's kind of like that mechanic in uh, Isle of Sky. Yeah, where yeah. you where you set the price of pieces and hope right, that right. they don't want to pay it, but you'll get, I mean, except in this one you don't get the more money, uh, but you you get the piece that you want to build, right? right. Yeah, <clears throat> and there's and the little tiles when you've closed off a room, mm -hmm. they have an ability could pop up. Oh, that's that cool. Does different stuff and everything. That's like, cool. Depending on the color of the. Now, room. do the pieces also have abilities <clears throat> like the little rooms that you can build? Well, as I'm saying, they will. Oh, okay. A lot of them don't because you don't score them until you've closed the room off. Okay. So like once you have all the exits closed off, then it does whatever if it's okay. ability or you get victory points or yeah or whatever. Um, there's an app for it that's excellent. It, uh, I don't know, it's like four or five bucks if you download it, it plays just like the board game. It's oh, okay. Um, That's but, awesome. Uh, you know, you get some people, like Chad, he mm -hmm. doesn't care if he wins or loses. He wants to make, he always has to have the throne in his castle. Oh. <laughs> so he'll, no matter what, he'll pay no matter what, whatever, he has to have a throne in there. Okay. Um, some, it's a some, some people are just like that. Some people want to just worry about building a cool castle. Yeah. And, don't worry, just let the chips fall out. Just like, oh, I got negative eight points. Um, Look at that. But my but, castle's cool. Right, but like, you know, you can go, you can go, um, some of the stuff there's goes underground too. There's like oh, basement type oh, that's stuff. That's cool. You know, stuff like that. So it's it's a really cool game. It's it's um, it doesn't get played as much as it should. Right. Um, right. But it definitely they is just better released in Serbia, the sequel, Palace. Yeah, and it's a whole Palace different. Is, kind yeah, of it's completely, game, it's completely right? different from from what I've seen. Yeah, um, it's interesting. Yeah, I really want to play that one. I need to just get it because I know I'll like it. Yeah. Um, all right, my forty two is a game I don't know if you play. It's an older game. I think it. Uh, uh, I have to look up the year. I think I know it's older. It's called Tikal. Uh, I know it. I okay. It. So to there's Tikal and Tikal two. Yep, and I've only played Tikal. Right. So Tikal is a worker placement game about going into like the Amazon jungle or something, or the, no, the Mayan, and uh, finding Mayan temples and es uh, excavating them to basically get a shit ton of points. And uh, it's, it's tiling, or not really tiling, but it's uh, tile revealing, I guess. As you go deeper into the jungle, you start revealing these different tiles that some 
uh, you'll find the towers that have numbers on them, and you can spend actions, so you have a certain like number of actions you can do, and each action costs a certain number of your pool, uh, to excavate and then just you know stack them. And it's really neat the way, because you actually stack on them, so if it starts out as a one, you put a two, and it slowly gets smaller and smaller right. until it's an actual temple. And that's really cool, um, but only one, there's only one ever ten tile, so you can only ever get that, and you're trying to hold them, which are worth your points, but then... Uh, throughout, you're also finding these like treasure, uh, you know, treasure spots that allow you to reveal a certain amount, which are also action points. So that's the set collection part. Right. But you can also spend points to just steal them from people. So you can try to find these, but also hoard them and hope that no one just takes them from you. Um, and it, it is a race because eventually you'll reveal. Uh, there's like three different scoring sections which uh, happened immediately, and you all score, and then you move up, and then the person finishes their turn, and it just continues on like that. Very, very simple game. It is definitely older looking, um, but I really like that action point spend. I like that feeling of going into a place in a camp in a strategic area right. so you're not so far away. And the way you lay the tile, no, it is tile laying, but the way you lay the tile makes it sometimes a lot more difficult to go a certain path so you can lay it in such a way that your opponents can't necessarily follow you. They could, but it's going to take a lot of their action points to actually get there, but then they can just start excavating. And then it's area control as well, so which is one of my favorite uh, mechanics. It's fantastic, and I don't think it's out of print. I think you can I'm still get ask it. You if it, if, if, if I'll look it up. Was the, what was the current one now? Or? Uh, if it is, like, I, I'm pretty <coughs> sure Tikal was better than Tikal 2, but the, from the way I speculated things, but I haven't played Tikal 2. Right. So, yeah, that's my number 42, Tikal. Okay, and to round out this 10. While I look up and see um, if... My 41 is the game I know you've played. Okay. And I don't know if you've mentioned it already, or, or you, you will mention it if you haven't, I'm okay. sure. Okay. Uh, Adrenaline? Uh, I have not. Um, I didn't know if you. I have not mentioned not. it yet. I don't know if I. I don't know if it's on the list. Right. Adrenaline is a first person. Wow. A first person shooter. Forty-one. As a board huh? game. Oh, it's a blast. It I, is so good. The only reason I don't own it is because it's in everyone's group, collection. Right. Every, every so, yeah. um, but it is so bonkers. I mean, it's just like front. You're just going around just. Just kill him. Okay, real quick. Yes. You can get to call from Cool Stuffing for thirty-two dollars. Oh, not bad. All right. So there you go. <laughs> um, but you just going around killing people. You're that's picking it. up big ass that's guns it. and just killing people. Yeah, and it's that's, that's, it is that's all it is. Literally uh, PvP. Like it, the little icons remind me of Spartans. Right. It's Halo. Yeah. Like it looks yeah. like Halo, and it's just as wild yep. with all the and, different guns. And you die. Respawn. Yep. You die. So, respawn. And it's just a brilliant mechanic that. So how you oh, just. But well, the points you get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was gonna say. Yeah. So the first time you die, that person gets a big chunk of points. Mm -hmm. it was, what ten? It was something, yeah, something like, like that. 10. Each time you die, you're worth less. So then you don't become that hot of a target. Of a target. Yeah. Um, so then they start going after the ones that are worth more points. Which allow you to go in and right, start getting right. points so as well. So it's, it's a really, really ingenious way of. Balancing the yeah. game and stuff. I think it is too. You can switch out weapons. You can the weapons uh, and the game's super simple to learn yeah. too. The only thing I wish they would do is release new maps. New maps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's, that's the one thing that I think they should do because I, I know the the weapons change right all right. over the place anyway. But um, it would be cool to have some it would be corridors really cool to have or some, some new maps of yeah. different different stuff that would change yeah. it up a little bit. And maybe they will. I mean, it's it's only been out for year and a half. Yeah, I think something it's, like yeah. that. So um, you just never know. I mean, because it's, yeah, it it's a fairly be. popular game. I mean, I don't know how it's doing overall right. sales, but um, but yeah, if you just want to go, it's, it's kind of like Wiz War in a way. Yeah. You're just going yeah. out just killing shit. That's it. That's I mean, all you're that, doing. That's all you're doing. That's the whole point. And you're just... And you're not you're mad not, like when they're right, right. dying. Right, right. You die, you respawn. There's no player elimination, so... Yep. So, and In fact, then, you're probably happy when you die. Right. You're like, thank God. <laughs> well, there's a point, I cannot remember what they call it. It's, there's that tipping point where it turns into what the final... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I know what you're talking it. about. But it flips into this game mode at the very end. Where everyone's uh, kind of like, one person's superpowered. Yeah. And it, everyone else is kind of a little bit. Yeah, and, and it's just like, they just go and just... It's yeah, like, it's kind of like, like Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just yeah, like, everyone becomes OP. Um, and it is, I guess, uh, resource management a little bit with your ammo. Right, right. Yeah, because you have to spend 
points for ammo, and there's you can get different weapons that combo perfect, like tractor beam them in and then sledge him, sledge him, yep. and yep. tractor beam him, sledge him. There's just all kinds of cool. And then that's another thing. It'd be cool to come out with more weapons. More weapons, yeah. You know, it just, just needs an expansion, not to fix right. the game, just to give, give yeah, us more. Yeah, more content, really good. But yeah, it's a blast. Okay, and last for this segment, my 41 is a game that I think you've asked about but haven't played by Level 99 Games, Pixel Tactics. Nope, Pixel Tactics, uh, so Level 99 is quickly becoming my favorite, one of my favorite, uh, 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 wow, not designers, uh, companies, sure. Um, publishers. Publishers, thank you. I was thinking <laughs> producers. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> publishers. Um, Pixel Tactics is a game, kind of takes from the, it's in the world of uh, BattleCon. And while also not intuitive, does something that's really, really neat. So you have a grid, uh, a 3x3 three three grid. Your, your front guard, you have your leader in the middle, which does a special ability if he's the leader. Um, you have his, the mid guard, and you have the rear guard. And each card in your deck, and you can draft or you can, you know, construct or do whatever I usually draft, does basically a thing depending on where they're at in the middle. So some cards, and there's two things, you can lay it as a trap or lay it as a boost as well. Or if he's a rear guard, he does this. If it's in the mid, he does this. If he does it in the front, he does this. That's why it's not intuitive, because you basically give someone a card and you're like, hey, this can do five things. Right, right. Which is like, uh... So I understand that, but no game does this. Right. And yeah, all the all the art is is pixels, and uh, it really helps because I know the BattleCon characters a lot and kind of the world a little bit more. Um, it's it's awesome because I thought you can pick your leader from anyone. Anyone can be a leader, and they have certain abilities if they're the leader. And the point is to kill the other person's leader. And one time I played this game where my I can do an attack as a free action uh -huh. with a, with my front guard. Um, and I can, so I was basically attacking a lot, but my opponent who had, he had a leader that when your people die, they get flipped over and they fill that spot. So you have to spend an action to remove them gotcha. um, to free up that slot to play another one. He had ones where he could basically remove his people and pull someone from like, and put them at the bottom of his deck and put someone new out. Huh. So I couldn't kill it. Once I would do a shit ton of damage and like they'd be one away, he would just plop around and put a new person. Out. So I couldn't kill them right. enough where he had to re like clean up the grave or something. Uh, but I love Pictal Tactics for that innovation that, that it has, that just the strategy behind it of where you're going to place them around your leader is just fantastic. Or you can use them as a trap and be like, okay, you're going to do this, well, I'm going to activate it. It's awesome, and the intuitiveness doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So, so that's it. That's my 41. And that is it, everyone. That is everything for this segment of 50 through 41. Click the I to go to 40. Uh, to 31. I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want to support us, you can go ahead and click that link to go to my Patreon account. If you have any suggestions, you can go ahead and click the link in the show notes below to go to my board game geek, geek list. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.